again, hello, my fellow runners. I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to apologize for those who are native English speaker because I can I can't even imagine how much pain will deliver to you. <laughs> Uh, initially, I was about to um, deliver some kind of propaganda for you, for you uh, to talk how great the situation overall, but uh, they cut all my time. I discovered that my time was quite limited, will be quite limited. So I decided to cut almost everything interesting and uh, just uh, make a small coffee talk about the current situation. Actually, I don't believe it's so bad as uh, someone of you might uh, think. Okay. <clears throat> Intro. Uh, imagine a situation. Some, uh, some of you will, will download some uh, application. For instance, Instant Messenger, uh, Media Player, or some game, or something of like that. And uh, you are trying to read how to install it. And first of all, uh, you found that you need to install the latest JCC for, because uh, your distribution has a very uh, outdated one. Well, it sounds really, really um, uh, strange, uh, but it's exactly the situation we have with Erlang right now in most of the Linux distributions, except one. <laughs> Wait, I'll... <laughs> uh, and uh, in this talk, I'd like to... Um, this talk is consists of several parts. First of all, I'd like to talk why we're here. Second, uh, what, we, what could we do with that? And the uh, prediction part, latest one. <coughs> so what's the difference between JCC, just for example, JCC, and Erlang? First of all, Erlang is quite a major language. However, some of you already know that Erlang was developed since uh, the 80s and uh, open sourced in the 90s. But I believe that it was truly open sourced in November 2009, where it was regi registered at GitHub. And after that, we have a huge, well, well uh, almost at that time, we have a huge explosion of interest to Erlang. People started uh, sending patches or something like this. Uh, uh, previous uh, patch application patch was uh, quite uh, complicated and almost uh, nobody uh, sent uh, patches with contrast with what we have now. Uh, there are several problems because uh, since we have a huge explosion of interest, so the, the overall platform becomes quite unstable. I mean uh, unstable not in, case, in, um, in terms of uh, stability, reliability, but unstable in API. Some functions uh, introduced, some functions, functions were removed, and uh, that situation made uh, upgrade from one version or to, to the another version quite uh, complicated. Uh, uh, Erlang doesn't have any uh, backward compatibility. That means that if you um, Build uh, something with Erlang R for R14 or R15, you just uh, can't uh, predict whether it will run on uh, R20 or not. So that could be a problem. Now, why people don't use distro, distro specific versions of Erlang? Well. Uh, since Erlang is a major language, still a major, there are not so many uh, popular libraries, popular applications for Erlang. Uh, major ones are from multimedia guys, from Basho fellows, and etc. But they are very little. There are many uh, other applications that are, not, that are not so popular, and uh, probably distribution maintainers just don't know about them, so they don't include them into distributions. So if you deliver some software, if you deliver some software to the clients, you just uh, can't rely on what already exists on the distribution. Well, uh, uh, I thought I missed one part. Uh, when I registered to that conf conference, uh, there was one question the, from the registration form. What was my desired audience? I think my desired First of all, I believe my desired audience was quite, really quite uh, wide. 
However, later I mm, narrowed it a bit. I believe that all my talk should be available for those who would like to deliver some software to the clients to the outside your house, your power software house, maybe. Uh, so uh, keep it keep it in mind. <coughs> Second problem, which uh, uh, introduced by the distributions, is frozen versions. Uh, Package maintainers are very shy and uh, not so brave people. And if we started com complaining, we, it's better for them not to do anything rather than doing something, upgrading, because every uh, change is, is quite uh, com controversial. So we try to avoid it as much as possible. So since I told already that uh, upgrade between versions is, is quite uh, complicated, we don't want to upgrade without serious, serious reasons. And, um, but, but, uh, that's why we stick with some maybe a bit outdated versions of libraries and apps among those uh, few which are already presented in your distribution of choice. <coughs> uh, maybe it's not a problem. Uh, you know, we have Erlang uh, itself. We have a wonderful tool, uh, Rebar which could build uh, your application, which could uh, deliver some um, dependencies. And you, you just tell people, you must uh, rebuild the very latest and greatest one and install it somehow. And I'll pull uh, some software for you and you will install. If you believe it's simple, ask Max Lakshin because he tried very, it's best to just to rebuild Erlang uh, statically, I mean, statically rebuild it against the uh, latest glibs, against what Yatsera, uh, if Max is here, no, he, he ran away. <laughs> okay, so it's quite complicated, but the problem is not about com complication of that process, but uh, really what developers want. They want to deliver uh, a reliable method to deliver for delivering the applications to the people or target hosts outside their plat uh, building platform. Second, we would like to ensure that it's up to date. For, uh, that cl client won't uh, complain regarding uh, won't complain with outdated versions of his software. Uh, uh, so we need somehow update that and prove it work. Uh, Rebar uh, has nice integration with uh, several unit testing facilities like e unit testing, common testing, etc. So it sounds quite double. However, it's not. A bit of history. Every language so far, at some point, create their own uh, incompatible with anything else, uh, strip it down isolated version of package management. Uh, the, it applies for Ruby, for Perl, for R language, of, mm, for lots of language. Uh, so people came up with an idea at uh, some point, but uh, you know, uh, convenient uh, package managers are complicated. Uh, the process of inclusion software is over complicated as well. So we need to build something small, which uh, which is capable only to deliver um, libraries and application uh, specific to that language. Uh, Erlang is not an ex exception here. Uh, Erlang uh, provides uh, several utilities of that kind, simple, uh, similar to that. Uh, some people believe that Erl Rebar can uh, handle ex uh, extension de dependencies as well. Uh, some other created uh, some kind of uh, directory directory services with their long, uh, applications like CAN and uh, Agner, mm, to name a few. <laughs> later, but later every language will try its best to integrate the homebrew uh, package manager into a convenient big one package manager because of several problems uh, which we in encountered later after uh, public introduction of the homebrew, uh, homebrew package manager. Updates and delivery. So we return to what uh, um, the developers require. 
developers would like to have? Well, I wouldn't talk anything about users because it's simple what, uh, to understand what users want. We, we need reliable, stable, fast software which doesn't break, which, which, which works. So let's focus on developers because I believe almost of those who attended this con uh, conference are developers. Developers would like to create uh, some kind of blob with the rebar or with some kind of with some other tools. Uh, <laughs> the problem is we don't know really for sure whether it works at cl for client or not. Because uh, although uh, rebar could um, handle some manually specific specified dependencies, it fails to uh, um, uh, handle uh, border cases. Yeah. I'd say it border cases. You know, uh, modern Erlang projects does not consist only from Erlang software, from Beam files, but also they probably have some kind of NIF stuff, like so libraries, port libraries, uh, uh, C nodes, and yet et cetera. All of them are require are based on system wide software. Well, uh, for there are two different approaches here. For instance, Basho folks decided to bundle everything within their software which requires uh, which requires external stuff. However, for instance, CodeGB does the opposite. They explicitly require some specific versions of uh, software which must be installed for in your system before you run CodeGB, for instance. Um, What's the problem? Uh, Rebar uh, uh, generated uh, release doesn't have doesn't know anything about what user will have on his system. No, uh, you may build your own software with Ubuntu or with Debian. However, user will have some vintage stuff like RHEL for for instance, with absolutely different set of library with totally uh, different compiler and etc. So if you run every every test from your unit test with Raybar, you ensure that uh, it will work for you and you deliver to the user, to the customer, and uh, uh, you will surely have a complaint from, from him that, you know, it doesn't work for me because, because of some cryptic error. Sorry. So I propose the different approach, somewhat, somewhat com more complicated when um, just uh, delivering something with Rebar. Integrate Rebar and your favorite distro package uh, management system. It's, it's, it's much better, much better. So. As I told you, uh, uh, Rebar doesn't handle package pack dependencies well. However, Distro Package Manager does. So if you would like to deliver uh, a software in a reliable way, you must reuse package managers. You must use it as much as possible. Uh, let's, let's, let's. There are a few different stages. Uh, actually, there are a few different stages of software delivery. First of all, you will, you should prepare your hardware to build some stuff. I mean, you need uh, to install JCC. You need to install uh, Erlang on your own machine. You need to, you need Git. You need lots of tools for for example. Second stage is actual building. Where probably Erlang is is an interesting, convenient tool. However, some people still use auto tools and later if time permits i'll tell why uh, next stages is uh, building a package which also can could be done with erlang or with rebar quite well uh, next stages is dependency calculation uh, delivery to the client for the client and the installation uh, upgrade or remove uh, as you can see, later later stages can be really uh, uh, managed by Rebar because 
he already does his job and quits. Uh, for instance, you build uh, some quite good software product uh, with lots of new files within it and deliver it to the client. So far, everything works. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, because you should know about that as soon as possible, a client upgrades his machine without without any warnings or several machines without any warnings uh, because he, uh, your package that will, will not wasn't integrated with the package manager so when uh, packages were upgraded nobody really, uh, really uh, found the problems and after a boot <laughs> if, if he upgrades kernel after a boot uh, he found that nobody no nothing works for, for now so if you deliver him not a simple zip file or something like the package or RPM package with dependencies uh, specifically inserted, calculated, uh, there won't be such a sorrow case for you. Oh, different stages? Sorry, I missed that stuff. Rebar and package manager. So uh, what I would like to tell is Rebar is doesn't manage uh, dependencies. It's just a build tool like Auto Tools. It's much more handy and convenient for Erlangers than Auto Tools because uh, it's just simple. It's very it's ultra easy, super easy to drop some stuff and rebuild your pre uh, package. However, you could encounter some issues if you start building an IF with uh, that stuff. Especially if you build not only for for you for specific hardware, but for different hardware for Power PC for Tilera. Mm, I heard that folks from IBM experiment with Erlang on Power architectures, uh, probably with RabbitMQ. Uh, also, I know that uh, some folks from Australia experiment with Telera boxes, it's the entirely different architecture, so you just, you just can't rebuild uh, that stuff on your machine for them. You must uh, provide some convenient way, for, way for them to get the software. Uh, so, Rebar is a build tool. Package manager can com compute dependencies, which Rebar can do, uh, unless you specify them explicitly. However, well, no, Every time when you specify something manually, uh, you probably uh, add a room for further errors, for further issues. So I'd like to avoid that completely. Erlang should do that for you. Well, not Erlang, maybe. Later I'll explain more. Okay. So how to create dependency chain uh, uh, with, from within Erlang packages? Well, I would not say anything about uh, dependency calculation of, uh, of, um, management uh, from C projects, uh, C++ projects. What was already des described lots of times, you just Google for that. However, for Erlang is um, well, a bit complicated, maybe. Uh, not so many people uh, really dig inside uh, what, what's inside the hood, what's inside the skin of Erlang. Uh, there, are, uh, there is an interesting uh, application, Beam Library, Beam Leap application, which uh, could offer you a convenient way to uh, recompose and compose back uh, uh, Beam files. Uh, by analyzing each Beam files on your so from your software package, you could build a list of dependencies, build a list of exported functions in the uh, module uh, uh, function arity format. You could also build a list of exported functions in that format as well. It can't uh, handle situation with apply MFA functions, uh, function calls, but it, well, uh, there is no perfectionism in, in that world. So uh, you need, uh, you all, all you need is to provide hooks, specific hooks to the uh, package manager of your uh, favorite distro. I've, uh, I'm aware of that stuff from within uh, at Linux distribution, however I don't know how far we, we go with the way, down the way. Uh, I've heard that uh, folks from uh, Debian did some uh, research in that area. They built uh, quite interesting um, dependence management, 
dependency calculation system for Erlang. Uh, we in Fedora project, um, as well as an uh, ArchAAL project, uh, pursue the following goals, the, the similar goals, and we in process of building um, software dependency calculation for Erlang projects. And if if everything will go right, if, if time permits, then probably to the next uh, RPM package manager will introduce something workable, working. Caveats. Well, uh, there are some caveats I'd like to warn you before you start <laughs> uh, following me. Uh, first of all, uh, you should unbundle every third-party library uh, you are bundled so far. Well, it's it's not rocket science. It was uh, described multiple times, and I don't ever waste my time in describing that again. But it's the right thing to do. Just just do that stuff. Second, be careful with the unit. Well, uh, you know, I'm not a, um, I, I love a unit as well as most of you, uh, I believe. However, I'd like to warn you that a unit operates on different set of files, different beam files when uh, those who you, uh, which you would like to deliver because it, it recompiles uh, everything with uh, some specific uh, de debug info, with some specific de defines. Uh, for instance, with export all, for example, you must be. You, I was very surprised how many uh, errors I found so far just by just statically analyzing uh, beam files from quite quite no well-known software developers because we just didn't spot that before because they recompile everything and uh, run unit tests and unit tests uh, ends without errors. So we believe that everything is working. So, but it's not because we don't we missed some explicit export functions, uh, which could lead to some problems. Uh, actually, I believe that ETAP library is underestimated. It's so big underestimated because you know uh, uh, every time you find uh, some news about Erlang, you you may add the word isolated because no, we created isolated uh, build tool rebar just for Erlang. We created isolated set of unit tests just for Erlang. We created isolated that and isolated that. ETAP is not isolated. ETAP allows you to run tests from the ground, from the very, very basic stuff like JLibs. But in some cases, it could be interesting just in some cases. However, I'm not opposed to the a unit. I love a unit, as I told you already. Yeah. So these are caveats. How about release? Well, uh, as you might know, uh, Erlang is a great tool because he builds release simple. Before Erlang, oh, uh, Rebar, before Rebar, uh, uh, building releases were, were quite painful. And almost everyone just skipped that part. Well, we'll deliver it that old school way. We don't want to hot code reloading, etc. Or build their own tools for that. For instance, yeah, reloading maybe. Uh, Rebar could build release quite well. Uh, so, is it possible at all to in integrate uh, building release? It's just a blob of data. It's not so. It's nothing really complicated. Uh, into the what was already done with the package management. Well, imagine a situation where every uh, unit for your project already uh, available with, from within your distribution. So can you just rebuild release on, from what you have? Well, probably, but not right now. Uh, problem is that uh, dependence generator, which is not yet released, <laughs> but it, it should be already fixed because release requires specific, exact specific versions. The same is, uh, some of you already know, uh, is uh, the same situation in OCaml. Because if you build OCaml not in, like uh, ML Donkey did, uh, just one static library, uh, if you build it properly, well, not properly, in the other way, if you build it in the other way, with a set of dynamically loaded, loaded libraries, you surprisingly found that uh, the single change in the library, the single uh, fix in the library, 
which ruins entirely API. So you need uh, precise uh, version requirements. Uh, we in Fedora build uh, a single hash for each library and the uh, dependency chain uh, is intact until you do something really horrible. So the same is for Erlang. The same uh, is required for Erlang dependency generation. Uh, uh, release generation. So if you deliver a release somehow, you need to build a tight version dependency, not like previous popular ones uh, require this version or higher, like in Debian, for instance. Uh, Yeah, well, the problem, the another, another one problem is, can we store more than one version of software? You know, uh, uh, simultaneous uh, smooth upgrades in Erlang, uh, live upgrades, require that you have at least three versions of Erlang. Uh, current, previous, and the version you, you, are, you are about to upgrade to. It's possible. Almost every package manager I found so far uh, uh, Debian package management uh, manager, uh, RPM, and uh, Mac, Mac OS X uh, related stuff uh, allow you to install both uh, more than one version. So it's it's doable. However, you need to fix Rebar as well. It's it's in the working process as far as I know, uh, because Erlang uh, Rebar tries to read and write into the write into the system library where normal user can't uh, simply write into the user lib or long star. So it, it's double, but double, but with time, you, you need some time, you need to give some time. <coughs> Proposal. So my previous uh, parts, uh, well, I cut almost all everything interesting from them, so I'm apologizing for that, apologizing for that. That's the last time I'm apologizing, by the way. Uh, mm, uh, I, I'd like to convince you that the situation is not that bad. You need to work towards, you need to move towards the package manager, pack, uh, package maintainers. As I told you, we are shy and um, not so brave persons. Just uh, throw them a little help and maybe uh, just show a sign of interest. I don't, uh, well, most people can't really well handle uh, personal abuse, <laughs> except me, maybe, <laughs> because people are trying to be polite with me. <clears throat> so, uh, to fix that situation, you should uh, participate in the uh, in life of your par in your particular your favorite distribution, because it, it gives you great advantages. It will fix, uh, it will deliver your clients uh, reliable, it will deliver your clients reliable platform on which you could build a great software if you plan that stuff. Uh, otherwise, you may skip that part. Why really? Well, the most important, the most important motivation is I did because I can. Uh, as I told you, you are, you already probably do some uh, stuff in that direction, you're building some great stuff and you're delivering the clients, why not to do it in a better way? Why not to ensure that, why not to run a robotic test, some kind of automatic test which, are, which could ensure that your software will be delivered in a better way, rather than just uh, providing a zip blob, that kind of thing. O also, you will bother, borrow some expertise for free from the great guys, because uh, just a uh, fun story, which I would not <laughs> cut, um, is uh, the situation which CouchDB. As I told you already, CouchDB requires specific version of JavaScript, com JavaScript interpreter library. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we in Fedora upgraded it to the next uh, version from uh, 1.7.x to 1.8.x, which uh, completely ruins the entire fun functionality of uh, CouchDB. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, I didn't know what to do, and I asked uh, help for the great guys for who are capable of doing that stuff, who are well, very well familiar with internals of JavaScript, and they fixed that. So we delivered a code GDB based on the uh, next version of JavaScript about uh, six months before ev everybody else. <laughs> everybody else. So uh, I believe that 
that sounds quite uh, interesting just to borrow something for free from great uh, sp uh, expertise uh, from, from great guys predictions oh that's fine fun stuff because uh, nobody will blame me for predictions if something goes wrong I just say just we are just my predictions I predict that we'll about to see a better integration of rebar and convenient package management uh, uh, we are about to see further expanded Erlang support and auto tools I don't have time for auto tools uh, you may ask me in private later uh, about details also one is a feature is a session I, and I absolutely sure we'll see it very soon is a uh, some kind of uh, library or application to deal with uh, beam files directly uh, probably written in Python maybe maybe uh, because I already see uh, people expressing interest in that uh, direction because they trying to manipulate uh, Erlang files beam files without uh, Erlang itself it's uh, we have some user cases for that. Thanks. That's all. Any questions? No. Oh. Очень приятно видеть вживую мейнтейнера пакетов. Это великие люди. Probably yes. И вопрос. Насколько велики преимущества использования пакетов, чем использование... I told that about 40 minutes, that's why it's so great. However, well, you know, as I told you already, I don't have much time for my topic. Also, I, I have quite not so great knowledge of English, so I cut almost everything. So just believe me, it's great. <laughs> well, uh, I think... Uh, no, one particular one particular thing I'd like to tell you is uh, reproducibility of the results. Now, if you deliver something to the wide audience, audience uh, as well as to the, your uh, testing machine, maybe you could ensure that everything works as as you plan. If you just build it and drop some uh, zip file, as I told several times, you just don't know whether it works or not. Ask Max Lapshin; he tell you the bitter truth regarding how how complex is just to building some zip file and deliver to the clients uh, isn't uh, on the contrary if you build it within your distribution within your favorite distribution you could just point users that distribution it will work i prove it, it uh, it's a reliable platform maybe i don't know what you say then so i believe it's it's better than just just don't participate in it all isn't a Carol uh, sandbox uh, enough for delivery? Недостаточно ли использование сандбоксов типа Carol, питонского виртуал-энфа и так далее для выдачи клиентов? Well, regarding Carol and its... Uh, to be honest, I didn't dig into details regarding Carol, but it's the same uh, it will face the same problems if you upgrade or change underlying libraries and Erlang does uh, depends on underlying libraries especially if you change or remove upgrade etc underlying libraries from the new file from the port port libraries from the C nodes you it will probably ruin application your application or probably probably not who knows we don't know however if you control all that stuff uh, with the package manager you will it will it won't uh, user to mess with the uh, with the dependencies. Won't until it does something really bad. Thank, Thank you, Peter.